Man, can, good morning again. We're going to settle back in here and get moving on what we have to share on this morning. Um, I think for the most part, uh, even when what we're hearing and what God is doing um, through the Laurel Pregnancy Center um, and through what God is doing continuously through us, I feel like this is something that we have to take into careful consideration um, in what God is doing in all of our hearts and all of our minds. So um, really quickly, I want to just say thank you. Uh, on last weekend, I know you know a lot of our youth were gone because we were up in the mountain. Uh, we were at Reboot um, at the conference there, and uh, we had an awesome time. And I just am so thankful for everybody who donated, who prayed, and all of that um, in terms of seeing that our youth had the opportunity to go and to share in this experience. So if you could really quickly give yourselves a hand uh, for helping us in that. Um, our youth really appreciate it. Um, so I want to just say thank you again for that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. But before we do that, let me uh, pray and ask God to bless our time in his word on today. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for another day. God, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us at life. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you're great. God, you're mighty. God, you're strong. And God, I just pray, Lord Jesus, that our hearts um, be filled um, with uh, conviction on this morning for the things that um, we need to be pressing into you about. God, those things that are pressing on our hearts that maybe we've put on the back burner. God, I pray that those things um, show up brightly. And God, that we're able to answer the call that you've given all of us on today. So God, let our hearts be prepared for your word and for what you would have us to do on today. And God, that you're glorified and God, that you're honored and God, that you're praised. So God, we thank you for this. And God, I pray that you be with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to be coming out of Psalm, the book of Psalm 139. So if you go ahead and turn to the book of Psalm 139, and we're going to walk through a couple verses there in terms of what it is that God is showing us and how we value the sanctity of life. Um, when we think through sanctity of life, we think through um, a lot of different things of, of what that means. Um, what that means to a lot of us um, specifically. Um, but I want us to make sure that we're focusing on God's value of what life means and how he has created each and every one of us for purpose. Um, and that's something that's really, really key. Um, so before we begin, there is one thing that I would like for you to do, all right? And this is the only time that I'll ask you to do that because um, this has a big reasoning of where we're going in this sermon. Um, you, as you know, uh, Pastor Sarah already said about how the, the bulb and stuff like that with that is going out. So if you can, if you can just listen or if you want to turn, I can give you a little cheat. It's on the back. Um, so if you want to, you can do that. But I just want you to watch this short one-minute video about something that just happened in our country on this past, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday. So go ahead and show that video for me. Now to developing news out of Albany about reproductive rights here in the Empire State. The state legislature has passed the Reproductive Health Act. Governor Cuomo moving quickly to sign this into law tonight. This is part of his administration's push to make sure women here in New York keep their right to control their own bodies in case the Supreme Court ever overturns Roe versus Wade. A new law would also allow physician assistance to perform abortions here in New York. We have to go even a step further and do a constitutional amendment so no governor, no legislator, no political swing can ever jeopardize a woman's right to control her own body in this state. To me, it's, it's, it's a sad day. Um, it's, not, I'm not, I'm not a, it's not a proud day for me, and I don't think it's a proud day for most uh, conservatives or people who have a, a pro-life position. Now, opponents predict the new law will lead to more late-term procedures. The Democrat-led Senate and Assembly passed the bill on what coincides with the 46th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision. All right. So, um, really quickly, um, because I know a lot of us like to put on our red and blue hats, um, but we're not going to do that. All right. What, we're, what I want us to think about in terms of what it is that God is calling us to do and how we value life, I want us to think through and make sure that it's something 
that we're thinking it through from God's way. All right? So, really quickly, God ordained or instituted three institutions. Family, church, government. We understand that. Um, Clearly what we're focusing on um, now is government in terms of what I just had you to see and all those types of things. Um, Romans 13 gives us a very detailed outline of how we're to think to that and how we're to appreciate and how we are to go about understanding that. But one of the things that I feel like and I want to press into today is are we truly valuing God's way of how he instituted it? He appointed it. He ordained these things. Sometimes what we can do is we can get so caught up in thinking of of, of our mindsets and what we think towards um, life and all that kind of stuff that we tend to forget that God ordained it all. God is the creator of all. So what I want to do in 1 Psalms 139 is walk through just some simple things that I pray that we're able to understand that and how we value the sanctity of life. So Psalm 139, starting with verse 1, it says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Verse 6 says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. So I want to pause right there for my first thought. God's omniscience. God's omniscience to break down this Christianese word, his infinite knowledge. All right? God's infinite knowledge. Here's something that I want us to understand. God knows everything. I feel like sometimes we forget that basic point in our walk with Christ. God knows everything. There is absolutely nothing that you can think of or think up that you can try and oops God about. He knows everything. What scares me sometimes is that as believers, I feel like we get so caught up in what we think we know that we forget God's agendas and his values. And that can be a very scary place because when we do that, we start forgetting about people. And we start worrying about agendas instead of worrying about people. It's something we know how to think about. I remember my mom all the time used to say, boy, you're so smart, you're dumb. <laughs> I'm like, mom, I don't know what that means, but am I supposed to be happy? Or are you about to whoop me? I don't know. Um, but I thought about that st- statement, hindsight's twenty twenty, because now when I look at that, There's so many things that I tried to manipulate and talk my way through as a teenager. And just, oh, let me do this. Let me go to that. Oh, I got it. And she knows. She's been living life a little longer than me. There's just some things that she knows that I don't. And she's like, you know what? I hear you. But that mama wisdom, you can't beat it. And there's something about what I feel like as believers, Christians, we tend to do that a little. We get so full of ourselves and what we feel like we've studied, and what we feel like we know, that we forget that we're still the created by the creator. All right? So that's something that, and we understand that, we understand the value of life. We have to understand it from a perspective where God has given us to do that. God's infinite knowledge is not something to skim over when thinking about the value he places on life. In regards to God's omniscience, his infinite knowledge, there's a passage in Colossians that I want to just read to you really quickly. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. And it's Paul talking to the church of Colossae, and he's specific in how he's actually praying for them. And it says in verse 9, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Paul understanding and knowing what it is that they need, what they needed. His wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. 
My prayer today is that we do just that. In regards to life, in regards to the sanctity of life and all these things, my prayer is that we get it from God's way. Not any, not any media outlet. Because one of the things that I've noticed, even when I was watching that, and I, and I, I watched a couple of clips to try to find the quickest one, um, is Governor Kumo made a statement that really stuck out to me in terms of even if 1973 Roe v. Wade, which was the act that was passed to legalize abortion in America, even if that is overturned out of the Supreme Court, he wanted to make sure that New York was locked up to be able to still do what they wanted to do. And then you heard the applause. So, what's key in that, and I'm not trying to pick on a Democrat or liberal or anything, but what I hear as a believer is that we have to make sure that when we get caught up in rhetoric, that that doesn't become our gospel. Whatever side you're on, so let me be frank and clear about this. Whatever side they're on, whatever thing that you're pushing or whatever thing that you feel like lines up, and yes, we're to pray uh, for those that are in the, in the government spaces and places. Yes, we're supposed to do that. But don't you ever forget as a believer that God has the infinite knowledge, Amen. that he's the one that holds the key to all. Let us not forget this basic point in the value and in the sanctity of life. So if we keep reading in Psalms 139, picking up at verse 7, it says this, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, Hades, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Hear me in this on verse 12, what David is saying. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Second thought for us. God's omnipresence. God's omnipresence. Breaking down the Christianese, he's present everywhere at all times. These are basic principles that I feel like sometimes we have completely left. We forget that he's present everywhere at all times. I had a coach in college that he used to say all the time, the eye in the sky don't lie. Hated it. The college professional ranks, they have literally cameras that are set up all around the field. So literally, after practice, you go in and you watch this film, and he'll be like, hey, Freeman, what are you doing on the sideline right there? I'm on the sideline. I'm drinking water. I'm tired. What do you mean? Uh, no, Freeman, what I see is you're, you know, you're goofing around. You're doing it. No, that's not. Now, 19-year-old Gary, who's got everything to say about everything, I want to go back and forth and all that good stuff. Hindsight, I see exactly what he's talking about. Because when I think through it and I'm like, man, as a senior, and I'm doing all these things, not paying attention, what am I showing the freshmen? What am I showing the sophomores that are coming up and we're trying to build something? We want to win championships. Scary part about that, as I correlate this, is I feel like sometimes in the church we do that. We tend to get and just think that God, we get the, the power button or something to cut off God's camera on our life. As if we can do this little thing and just get away with it. Not so. It's not how it works. Because if that's the case, then my prayers for you today is that we pray for the Holy Spirit to convict us. Because when we're walking through life and there are certain things that come against God's word, come against God's will, my prayer is that we're convicted. Not that we're able to cut the camera off and do what we want. It's a scary thing. So even if we're valuing life, when there's so many things in every single person's life in here where you have purpose and you have something that God is giving you to do, we tend to forget that he's all knowing, he's all knowledge. He's, all, he's everywhere at all times, and we need to understand this. 
from the standpoint of what God wants us to go and do in fighting for life. Hear this statement for me. God is absolutely inescapable. You can't escape God. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe in him or not, you cannot escape him. That is a fact. And what my prayer is, is that when we are thinking through life, that you're not guilted or that you're not punched in the stomach to make you think you got to believe who this Jesus is, but that you find out just how much he loves you and what he's done on the cross for each and every one of us. So that's something that we got to keep in mind when we're thinking about the value of the sanctity of life. When close to a million babies are aborted in this country in a year, and we're thinking about that, I don't want us to go straight red and blue when we start thinking through that. Not as believers. What is God telling us? God is telling us that since he's all-knowing, since he's everywhere at all times, that everybody, no matter how you get here, has a given purpose. And as the church, we get the opportunity to grab around and to hug young men and women who are going through a whole bunch of stuff. I, too, used to work in a pregnancy center. I was a fatherhood coordinator for over two years. And I got to see certain things when those clients walked through those doors. And there was one particular guy who walked in. And I remember getting a text message from some of our volunteers because I wasn't there that day. I was off doing something, speaking or something. And they were texting me like, oh my gosh, this guy's just so belligerent. He's horrible. He's in here cussing us out, blah, 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 blah. And he, they're just going back and forth and they're scared. And I was like, okay, get his information. I'll call him tomorrow. I'll call him the next day. He says, hey, I know who you are. Lose my number. I don't want to talk to you. And he hangs up. Now, thank God for Jesus. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> in Big G that wanted to go see where this guy was, but never, never mind. Um, so two weeks later, he comes back to the center with the girlfriend. So in my office, I get this knock. And the volunteers are like, hey, he's here, he's here. And I think they were just excited because they wanted to see what I would do to this guy. <laughs> I, I still think that. But... <laughs> But what ended up happening was, I go out, I say, hey, man, I'm Gary Freeman, I'm father of the coordinator here, and I don't know if it was just my great smile or my stature, but he agreed to meet with me. Um, so in that, we're meeting, and I'm asking this guy every question I can, and he's not budging. But then I get to one thing, and we get to his parents. And I ask him about his father. That opened up the floodgates. We're, persist- we're pursued to happen after that in my pursuit for him. He grew up, his mother was addicted to crack. She was addicted to crack while having him, while pregnant with him. His dad addicted to it as well, but was never in his life. So he was born, he was living, all right? His dad would only come to steal his mama's crack and to do whatever he wanted to do with his mom and then he would leave. That was what he knew of a father. His mom, Addicted to crack. So there was a lot that she was just ignoring him about. His freshman, sophomore year in high school, he gets a call. His dad dies from an overdose. Three hours later, his mom has a bag on and walks out the door. And to that day that he was in my office, he hadn't seen his mom since. Whoa. That's a whole bunch for a 14, 15-year-old kid. Granted, the 14 years he's already lived in life how difficult it's been. Now this happens. You want to talk about a punch to the gut by life? So what ends up happening is that he actually ends up still graduating high school, going to college, all these great things. He's sitting in my office in his nice three-piece suit with his six-figure job. But he's full of tears because he keeps telling her she she has to get rid of it. When in all actuality, life has kicked his butt. 
And he couldn't understand why he was in this position and why he couldn't feel love towards this child that was coming through his girlfriend while he was badgering her and beating her up, telling her to get rid of it. Life is what happened. Not a red or blue agenda. Life is what happened. And as believers, we understand that. We're all sitting in here with a story. But thank God we have a loving place where we can come together and we can share with one another and we can pray with one another. And that's exactly what people are looking for. So if we're going to be void of that in our pursuit of the sanctity of life, we're sadly mistaken against God's value, not our own. So if he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, we need to continue reading. Because here's something what I consider, for all my steak lovers out there, I consider these verses like steak. I think steak means a lot to people. I don't really like steak. You can't tell. But I feel like steak means a lot to folks, so that's why I say steak. I would say chicken if it was me, but you know. So, verse 13. Verse 13 says this. For you, were, for you, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. When as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they were more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Third thought. God's omnipotence. God's omnipotence. God's infinite power. consider myself to be a strong guy. I like to throw some weights around. Cool. But when we think through God's power, it's hard to even think through that. That's why I feel like sometimes we get in trouble. We try to take God and we try to fit him in our time and place. That's not possible. He's God. So when we take the time to actually say, God, you're going to fit in my agenda today, we're excusing the greatness that he wants to do through us. When those moments when we're weak, he wants to be strong through us. When those moments when we're hurting and we're broken, and you heard the statistic of two out of five women in the church having to deal with abortion, have to deal with this thought of what has happened. Where is the church to hug, to love, to be there, to share with, to serve, to support? Can we sit in here today and have this self-evaluation done and saying, where am I and what God wants me to do and feel okay with it? That's what I want us to think through when we're talking about the sanctity of life. Because if you've made this decision to profess God as your Lord and Savior, there's so many hurting women, and I pray to God that on today, that if there's any woman in here and you're feeling that, if you're feeling that hurt, if you're feeling that pain, understand that God's grace is sufficient. He loves you. Men, if you're sitting in here and you pushed her to do it, and you know you did, and you feel a guilt about it, God's grace is sufficient. It's what we do with where we're going, what God has given us. Because he's the infinite knowledge. He's present at all times. He holds all power. Please let that sink in. Please don't come in here and think you got it all together. Because there's so much that we could be doing to furthering the agenda of God. 
than battling ways that we think are going to have lasting impact. So that's why we pray for our elected officials. That's why we pray for all those who are in those government places. Because we want, we want God's hand to be on them. That's what we want. You don't want your agenda pushed through them. You want God's hand on them. That's what you want. If you say you profess Christ, there's a difference. So that's where self-evaluation needs to happen. Lean in with me here, please. God shows us through the development of a baby the very detail he presents in forming each person on this earth. The mystery that is human nature is one that only God can configure and that he can only rule. All that a child will be physically, mentally, emotionally is contained in this form in that fertilized egg ready to develop and be unveiled to the world. It's God-given purpose. That's why I agree with the sentiment. And Pastor Kip said one time, we love to hear babies. Let them cry. Figure it out. But yeah, that's fine. That's a signal of life. That's a signal of God's purpose happening. No matter what it looks like. One of the most forgotten groups in this country is the forgotten group of the disabled. You have the disabled, the elderly, all these different types of people that we can go and serve and that we can pray with and that we can be with. And these are things that as believers, we have to take on God's value. It's not about us. It's not. I hate to burst your bubble. But it's what God wants to do through us for hurting, forgotten, and lost people. For the unborn, for those who have a God-given purpose, but a whole bunch of life has hit people, and they feel like they can't do it. They feel like they don't have the resources. They feel like all these things are going on, but what if they had you to talk to? What if they had you to kind of go through and feel with them and pray with them and cry with them and be with them? That's what Loyal Pregnancy Center is here for. But what are we going to do about it? Do we even care? I wonder. From that egg that is fertilized in this mother's womb, it would develop 60 trillion cells, 100,000 miles of nerve fiber, 60,000 miles of vessels carrying blood all around the body, 250 bones, and a host of joints, ligaments, and muscles, all forming a creation that has a God-given purpose. So how do we love as believers? How do we take this time and this opportunity to truly trust what God has given us? If he's giving you a fluency, praise God. If he's giving you a big heart, praise God. If he's giving you a struggle that you've worked through and he's shown you how to work through it, praise God. Because guess what? It's for someone else. But I wonder sometimes, do we believe that? Do we truly trust God? A couple next steps. Law Pregnancy Center is here. They have a table out in the back. I would that you would stop by and just ask questions, see what they have, all the stuff that they provide, all the things that they do. Ask questions. This is your opportunity. That's why they're here. We want to eliminate barriers. So that we have the opportunity to go and to serve and to do what God has called us to do. Next thing, we can be intentional in seeking out ways to help in the community. Great organization. I've met with a couple of people. Community Action Council of Howard County. They have a whole bunch of listings of things that you can go through um, to, able, to be able to do. There's some great people just in this church. They have a whole bunch of great connections to be able to go and to serve and to do certain things. Alice Smith, Dave Smith. Did I just do that? <laughs> Sorry. But where's our heartbeat? 
This is a place where all I'm looking at across this is a beautiful array of different types of brokenness that God has either healed, working on, or wants you to touch out to your neighbor and be there for them. So when we understand that value that God holds on life, when we understand the need to support and to speak out for the unborn, it should make sense from a God value. Not a man-made agenda. One last thing. It's one thing to be pro-birth. But as believers, we have to make sure that we are operating in God's definition of pro-life. Being pro-life is something that has to do with speaking, speaking up for the unborn, for the homeless, for the oppressed, for the marginalized, and for the broken. As believers, that's who we're speaking to. The key to speaking out for these people is actually, guess what? You ready for this? Speaking. Action. Doing something. Past 1135 on a Sunday. That's what it means. Too often we're quiet when it counts as Christians. And by God's definition of that, we could be walking in sin. We, we, when we want to be closed off, to what God is pressing in our hearts and the Holy Spirit is convicting us about, we could be walking completely away from what God wants us to do. Being indifferent has slowly been the demise of a lot of what we see in the church in America. What I would say the sin of indifference. Where you see, you know, you feel a certain kind of way, eh. Not my duty. I'll leave that to PG. I'll leave that to PK. No. If you're a believer and you understand the love that God has placed in your heart through his son Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you, for me, then we ought to be able to say that, hey, all life is something that we need to press into how God wants us to use our gifts and talents for his glory. We tend to speak to those things that fit our comfort and not our convictions. We live, our, we live our Christian life out of our comfortability instead of our God-given conviction. So that's why it's so comfortable to not say anything. And I'm still a Christian. Well, I know of someone who was very uncomfortable. They spit on him. They beat him. They made him carry his own cross to his own death. They stuck a spear in his side and let him bleed out. They mocked him. Jesus shows us the perfect example of getting through those tough moments. Well, PG, I'm just not, you know, I'm not like you. I, don't, I can't get up there and talk about it. That's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking you to do is just pray and ask God to give you his value of life. Because I guarantee you he will then show you what to do. Guarantee you. We must truly adopt God's value system of life. And when we do, oh boy, we'll see true revival in this church. We'll see true revival in this community. We'll see true revival in our country. And we'll see the true presence of God and what he's called us to do. That's all it is. It's a call to understand It's not about us. It's about what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, for all of us. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your love, for your word, for the opportunity that we have to stand before you, to sit before you, to kneel before you. God, it's an honor to be able to truly show the love and the kindness that you first have shown all of us. God, I pray that every heart in this place understands the grace and the free gift of salvation. God, I pray that every thought that the enemy is trying to use to confuse, that it be blocked and that it be sent back 
in the name of Jesus because, God, you want people saved and in the understanding of your knowledge, in the understanding of who you are, so that we cannot keep that to ourselves, but, God, that we can go and share that in all the different areas and ways that you've given us to serve your people. So, God, I pray right now in the precious and in the holy name of Jesus that anyone who is in here today who is dealing with any type of hurt, guilt, shame, pain, whatever the case may be, that, God, you open up your love gates and that you pour out all over this place on this morning. Hallelujah. And, God, that you be glorified through every life that is in this place on today. God, we do not take for granted that you've allowed us to assemble today. Because today, my prayer is that we get it. My prayer is that we understand what you're doing through us and that the Holy Spirit move in a mighty way, God. That we feel that conviction. Yes, that we feel that load for our brother and sister next to us. Yes, so that we get on our knees and that we pray for everyone that is around us. Yes, that we treat our families in a way, God, that you are glorified. Because, God, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. So, God, right now in the precious name of Jesus, move mightily, God. Move mightily, God. Move on the hearts of every individual in this place. Where there's somebody in here who doesn't know you, Jesus. God, I pray that they get to know you today. Where there's somebody who's struggling in their relationship with you. God, I pray that whatever those barriers are, God, that they're able to understand and know who you are today. If there's anyone in here who's dealt with this act of abortion, and that has felt this pain, or who's confused about it, or who doesn't know what to think about it, God, I pray right now that your loving hand comfort right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to be a church that loves. Help us to be a church that shows who you are by what we do in serving the people around us. May we get this gift for ourselves. May we understand and know, God, that you love us so much. May we not ignore another Sunday of not seeing just how much you love us. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen our families. Strengthen our hearts, God. Strengthen our thought process, God, so that in all we do, we glorify you. God, and I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite our worship team, who's actually already kind of here. The worship team will go and come back up. And if you would, go ahead and stand to your feet.